Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming and we're back in RPG Maker MV and today I want to show you guys how to use action sequences and for me I've been uh, wanting to figure this out for a long time but I've been procrastinating but basically what an action sequen sequence is is uh, when, you cr when you attack or do an ability you can have the screen move around or your uh, characters uh, move back and forth. Like for example when I attack, Drifty's going to go across the screen and then show a sword and attack and then the monsters are going to come across the screen and attack. So it doesn't look so Final Fantasy 1-ish. And how you can uh, create skills that hit multiple times and uh, just do basically anything. You could you know, trigger common events. So as I use these skills I'm actually adding to a variable through a common event. And you can see the number of Bushido skill I have, which is set to 2 right now, because I've, I've already used 2 skills. And every time I use one of my skills, it's calling on a common event at the end, and uh, it's adding one to it. And also, uh, Dark Cut is inflicting blind, so that's working. And now I have 3 Bushido skill, and if I were to use it again, it should go up to 4. Um, so if you were wondering, there it is, 4. If you are wondering how to do this, I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to have a series of tutorials on the action sequences because it's a, a big uh, feature for MV, at least for me, it's a big thing. Um, and uh, it, there's, it's a lot to tackle. It's not uh, super simple, but it's not that overly complicated. You just need to learn the format. So if you go to Yanfly's website, he has a, a video on that. Uh, actually, you can visit his YouTube, chan uh, YouTube channel and uh, go check him out, him or her or them, uh, it might be multiple people, I think it's one person but I'm not sure, but go to, their, the name of the channel is Yan Fly Engine, and then go over to their videos, and then you're going to scroll down until you see, you might have to load more, uh, until you see the Battle Engine Core Part 2 action sequences, that's the video you want to check out, and then the subsequent uh, videos action sequence pack 1, 2, and 3. Go there, watch those videos um, because they're really, really helpful and they lay down the basics. So um, I'm going to show you what I found on the forums that Yanfly posted because um, somebody asked, how do you make uh, everybody's attack go back and forth and so that it looks more dynamic? So Yanfly posted this. And what you want to do is copy this right here and paste that into your normal attack right here paste that right underneath this this uh, note right here and just paste it in there and what what that'll do is have it so anytime you you normally attack um, and anytime an enemy attacks it, it'll uh, they'll jump across the screen and uh, it looks more dynamic also if you're using a ranged weapon um, the character won't go all the way up to point blank and fire it has a an else if statement in there so if you're using a ranged weapon, the character will stay over here and just fire their weapon. Uh, so that's basically it. So the skills that I've uh, that I've created a, a, my own uh, action sequence for, I'll, I'll show you really quickly uh, in system. Set to Mia. I've made a skill called Fusion Hammer, and it adds to a variable. Uh, let's look at the skill real quick. and uh, basically it just plays an animation that I made and it does damage based off of that variable but I want to show you the action sequence code that I put in there so if you wanted to copy it you can so basically there there's five settings five things that uh, each action sequence uh, needs to have or has but you don't actually have to include all five but some of them you do so to start off, you're going to type in brackets setup action, like so. Then you're going to use display action, and that's basically going to show the, the name on the top, like what if you're using uh, an ability. Then you're going to set your targets immortal so they don't die halfway through it. And then you're going to perform start. That's going to um, have your character move forward a few steps. And then you're going to wait for movement so the, the game doesn't uh, jump past that. Then you're going to show the, the casting animation if there is one. And then uh, you're setting wait for animation, 
so that um, the game waits for it to cast and then you're going to close the setup action because that's the first thing. Then you have a whole action which in this case uh, you can leave it blank unless you want to put something there. Uh, then you have a target action where most of your stuff is going to happen. So right here I have perform action and that's uh, actually starting it and then the motion wait for the user to, to step forward then I'm showing the action animation and then uh, the game is waiting for the animation to complete and then the action effect this is basically uh, where the damage is dealt action effect on what target or all if you want it to be multiple you would write opponents uh, and after you have any action effect you want to include a death break because if the monster has like a, a counter attack or, or, or magic reflect then you might actually die before the action's complete and then it'll still show you attacking even though you're dead so it's kind of funny but uh, how it works so you death break and then you show uh, another animation uh, if you if you want to continue to have the attack do multiple attacks if you didn't then you can skip this part so the fusion hammer is going to hit one target and then it's going to hit all targets uh, so that's the animation and then it's waiting for the animation and then the, here's where the damage is dealt action effect opponents and then since we've done an action there's another death break right there and that's the end of target actions and that's where you're gonna have most of the stuff then you have follow-up actions or follow actions uh, in this case I've left it blank you don't really even need to include it I've just left it there as like a template to show that this what this is what comes next and finally you have finishing actions so you're going to remove immortal you're going to this doesn't have to be caps so I'm going to change that then you're going to clear the battle log so it gets rid of the text on the top of the screen then it's going to perform finish that's going to ha move the character from like his step forward position to back and then you're going to wait for movement since there's going to be movement and then uh, I have uh, this this you won't need unless you're calling for a common event if you put your common event in here it won't actually call it unless you type this in the action sequence if you're using action sequences so uh, since I am using a common event and I'm using action sequences I need to use this action common event and you can have a you can call on the same common event multiple times but you can't call on multiple common events so if I were to put another common event in here like say uh, yeah whatever this is ice skill it's not it's gonna bypass the fusion skill up and it's gonna straight call ice uh, ice level up so you gotta be aware if you have multiple common events you're gonna have to uh, specify in here what event is being called uh, and I'll show you that in another video so I don't want to give you any wrong information um, so that's basically the the effect for fusion hammer and the, the action sequence now I'll show it to you really quickly now another side note since I'm using skills that uh, that uses variables you can see right here in the damage formula I'm calling on variable 11 which if I look at my common events and I check my my skills uh, 11 is the fusion skill variable um, you need to to declare your variables and what that means is I'm gonna show you real quick if you try to use a skill uh, with variables in the damage formula and you don't declare your variables so I've created a game I've got skills and this skills gonna call on a variable but um, I haven't declared my variables, i.e. set them to zero. So it's going to do nothing. It's not going to, it's not going to, see how it says zero? It's doing nothing. So in order to have your skills work at the beginning of the game, wherever the character starts, you need to have some auto play or auto run or parallel process event that just simply controls variables and sets them to skill. Once you do that one time in the game, the player can continue and load the game in different areas. As long as the variables, ha variables have been set, the skills will work when you call them. So when I open this chest, it's basically going to control the variables of Bushido, Holy Skill, and Fusion, and me as using Holy Skill and Fusion skills. So I'm declaring these just by setting them to zero, where they should be by default. In, in VXAce, I didn't have to do this, but in MV, I guess since it's JavaScript, you have to declare them. So when I open the chest, we'll see now that my skills will no longer do zero damage they'll be calculated correctly so I've declared my variables just by opening that chest and now I'll use fusion hammer and we do damage and you can see how it it uh... two things happen it, it uh... 
hit once the first target and then it did uh, all opponents and uh, that's basically uh, an action sequence in action cool. so I'll show you that uh, action sequence one more time and point out to where the 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 hits are, are taking place so when you have uh, action effect targets that's when it's hitting the first one and then we have a death break since we're doing damage and then we're showing an animation for both for all opponents and we're waiting for the animation and here's the action effect where it's actually dealing the damage to both opponents and then a death break since we dealt damage so I hope uh, I hope this video helped you guys I'm gonna bring this up one more time for you you can pause the video here and then copy this and put this in your regular attack up here you're gonna put this right in here and then everybody's attack and the beautiful thing is uh, you don't have to specify an action sequence for all your enemies unless you give them special skills in which case you would just specify in that skill you can set up you can put this and this is directly from Yanfly if you put this right here all of your uh, NP all your enemies will jump across the screen to attack and they're just gonna it's gonna look more dynamic so hopefully this video helped you guys if it did give it a thumbs up and uh, like favorite share subscribe if you want more content really appreciate all you guys keep asking those questions I like learning from you guys you force me to learn and that's cool so um, we'll see you guys in the next tutorial